Hello, I'm Udo Silman, Secretary General of Airborne Wind Europe and I would like to show you today airborne wind energy or how to produce energy with kites. The concept I want to present you is called airborne wind energy and since many of you may not know it, I would like to quickly discuss the principles and the concepts, tell you about the advantages and then also show you the current state of the airborne wind energy industry and how you could maybe interact with us. So, how can you produce energy with kites? Well, you need the kite, as you can see on the left picture. You tether it to the ground and you add a winch on the ground where you want to tether around. And then the kite flies circles, fully autonomously of course, and then you pull on the tether, the kite pulls on the tether with a strong force, unwinds the tether from the winch, and there you produce the electricity with the generator. Once the tether reaches its end, the kite flies quickly back, you reel in and the cycle starts from new. This is how what they call ground gen technology or the yo-yo because of the movement. There's an alternative to this which is called the fly gen technology. There you have mini wind turbines on the kite that you can see in this picture and you produce the electricity on the wing during the flight and uh, you bring it down through the tether. If you look at the whole technology, what we do is we replace the uh, heavy and uh, massive parts of a wind turbine and replace this with smart software and controls algorithms. And we only have the outer tip of the wind turbine blade which produce the most electricity. The, this is the general principle. This is how the, the first systems will look like. Here you see our members and their prototypes. And this is how it work, looks like in practice. This is a airborne wind energy system producing electricity fully autonomously controlled. Here you see the wing and the tether if you look exactly. And this is the flying the patterns of eight where the wing is pulling the tether out. Uh, you can also see the, the drum, how it's unreeled and there the generator producing electricity. Um, and it's doing a few more turns of energy production and then uh, if you remember the tether has to be reeled in and this will happen with the next turn and there it goes now it flies back uh, if you looked the tether quickly stopped and then the, the winch uh, turned back and reels in and that was it back to power generation mode, uh, back to flying the figures of eight. Um, yes, it's a pretty dramatic movement. It would be impossible to control by a pilot, but the software and the actuators make it possible. So why would we do this? And why should you maybe do it too? Well, uh, you see the one advantage here, and this is the capex. If you look at the right side of this chart, this is the most uh, these are the parts that we do not need for airborne wind energy, which is the tower, the rotor hub, the blades and the foundation. And that's 50% of the total capex, mostly material costs. These we can replace with uh, the software and a thin tether. This is the advantage of airborne wind energy, which saves 90% of the total materials. Here you see the saving of 90%. Um, on a visual, uh, with visuals, you see much lower footprint, much lower um, visual impact. The second advantage is we can fly higher with the wind, airborne wind energy system, higher than the 100 meter hub height that you have with a wind turbine, and up to 500 meters high. You see the wind resource is much better on the left side it is the 100 meter above ground, the standard wind turbine height, and on the right side you have the 500 meter hub height wind. Also, we are flexible with the altitude, so we can uh, fly also at 200 meters if at a certain point of time there's better wind than at 500. And this also shows in the graph on the right. So much better wind resource for airborne wind energy. Uh, second, if you add this and uh, have also a light system that can produce with low wind, you will come to much higher 
much more full load hours, much higher capacity factor that you can see here. So basically, the big question, how can we feed in to the grid much renewable fluctuating power becomes much less of a problem if you have uh, airborne wind energy systems. So uh, let's uh, sum up the advantages. In addition to the ones I mentioned, you have a much lower LCE and you are uh, flexible and you can reach new markets where you have to be small or flexible or mobile and that you don't have with uh, turbines. So where, are, where do we stand? Uh, can you already buy an airborne wind energy system? Not yet, um, but we have come a long way from the last 10 years. Here you see some of the milestones uh, that we crossed as an industry um, since we started roughly 10 years ago when first people thought, well, uh, the digital technology, the sensors, the drone technology is far enough that we can even think about doing something like airborne wind energy. Um, we are now at the demonstration phase that you can see here and the next phase will be the commercial viability. So what we do now is we have working prototypes. Now they have to be deployed on the first test sites and uh, then uh, scaled up further to make bigger devices. And well, this will be quite costly um, and we won't be com fully competitive yet. So there will be some need for public funding, but it's worth it, I think. Uh, if you look at this chart from uh, E.ON, now RWE, um, they agree with us that on the long run we have the potential to have a much lower LCE than uh, wind turbines. Of course, for the first time, for the first systems, we will not be competitive. That's why we need niche markets to start with. And here you can see some examples of niche markets that could be interesting entry markets for this new technology where we do not compete with wind turbines. This is one of the niche markets. It's uh, propelling ships. So you can't put a wind turbine on a ship, but you can put a kite on a ship and propel it. If you look at floating wind, a big advantage is, of course, we are lighter. We don't have any bending moments, so much simpler to have a floater built for an airborne wind energy system than for a wind turbine. Repowering offshore sites is an interesting aspect. And this is how the global industry looks like. Also academia, we have other players interested or working on airborne wind. You can see them on this map, but uh, mostly it's within Europe. And also within Europe is the Mega Ore Interreg program uh, from Northwest Europe, Interreg. So this is a program where um, airborne wind energy companies work together with regions and other players like utilities to build the first demonstration parks and to roll out the technology. So in a very interesting program and the, this is still looking for additional participants. So if you're interested in this technology, you can contact us and work with the Northwest Europe Interreg Mega All project. Also out of this project, we will need a lot of uh, collaboration with other sectors uh, until we become a mainstream technology and uh, can produce uh, gigawatts of airborne wind energy systems and deploy them. So um, you're invited to communicate with us, to discuss with us how you could work together in building this airborne wind energy future for us. I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. Um, we are happy to help you interact with us and our members. Thank you very much. Thank you.